Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. This is the Diaspora Transition episode where we interview people who moved back from the diaspora and currently living here on the continent. And on this episode, we have here someone very special, a young woman who moved from the USA and she's here in Ghana. Without further ado, Celine Entry. <laughs> yes. Welcome on the show. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's a well, pleasure. Wow. Thank you for coming. And uh, before we get into it, right? Mm -hmm. Entry is that's <laughs> a little bit of Ghanaian name, isn't it? Yes, I'm okay. fully Ghanaian. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Born and raised in the States, but okay. I'm full, both my parents are Ghanaian. Wow. For those watching for the first time, mm -hmm. briefly introduce yourself to them. Okay. So, yes, this episode is brought to you by Terra Nova, Home for the Elderly. And uh, this space is created by a lady from the diaspora or people from the diaspora who understand the needs of the diaspora and moving back from the U.S. and other uh, places around uh, the globe to Ghana and currently living here. Most people came back uh, retirement for their retirement. And um, sometimes, you know, not having a family member here is sometimes challenging. Um, if you are sick or the elderly at your home is sick and you have to go to work, you can't just leave them alone. So you need to, you know, find places like Terra Nova Homes where you can, you know, um, you know, sign up, you know, they have nurses who are certified also in, in CPR training, very friendly, who can take care of, of um, the elderly with passion, not just anyone just wanting to just do it for the money, but people who are, you know, dedicated with a craft and everything. And they are located in Tema Com 20, very close to medical facilities. So you don't have anything to worry, you know, very beautiful place. And yeah, check them out. Their name would be on the screen. Their telephone numbers will also be on the screen and also in the description, as well as their GPS or their landmark. So it will be very easy to look at them. So the name is Terra Nova Home for the Elderly. Hey, I'm Celine. Um, what do you want to know? My age, I'm, I'm really bad at about me questions. Mm -hmm. But I did move here a year ago from the States, born and raised in the DMV, Maryland area, and um, fully Ghanaian. I work in the healthcare space. I'm a healthcare entrepreneur and consultant, and I do creative things on the side as well. But yeah, that's mostly wow. the gist. Wow, that's very interesting. <laughs> yes. And you decided to move back to Ghana. Yes. Why Ghana? Oh, but it's home. <laughs> um, I grew up coming back home, spent a lot of summers here. Mm -hmm. um, and I always say, uh, most people know that Maryland has a really big Ghanaian community. Mm -hmm. So we all, we call that Accra, Maryland. So I've always been connected to home. Growing up, I think I even used to look up like boarding schools. I just had this dream. I love the freedom I had as a kid. It's different than the States being here and just, the, um, the easy going vibe. So I always knew I would move back. I didn't know it would be in this time, but as we know, here yeah, the return and ongoing Accra is really booming right now. So it was a perfect time. I, the timing just aligned for me. Okay, so are you trying to say year of return made you come to Ghana? Year of the return and ev everything that came out and showing how Accra is developing is what made me choose now. And then I realized at my age, I'm at the perfect time. I didn't have too much holding me down, not married, no kids. So <laughs> <laughs> I can, I'm more free to come now and establish my life here than waiting until like my later years. So what would you say triggered your move back? Because listen, mm -hmm. America is, the, is a dreamland. That's, yes. that's where I know someone watching right now knew that we start to go there. Yes. And you're like, you know, let me just put it on hold. Yeah. I'm moving back to the continent. That's where I feel like I want to be. What triggered that for you? The trigger was COVID. I COVID. think the pandemic okay. allowed us to slow down, really think and reevaluate a lot of things. And um, I was in the healthcare space, so I was actually working more. But I just actually coming the year of the return, 2019, okay. did kind of trigger when I came to December. I didn't love the hustle and bustle of December. It's not what I loved Ghana for, but. I had an a f instinct that I wanted to stay and I was like no school work I have to go back and as soon as I came back we were on lockdown I was like ah, why did I come back <laughs> I know a lot of I have actually friends and dads right here they got stuck in Ghana for lockdown wow. and so that's what made them stay so I just regretted it so much and then from there I started planning my move back wow yeah wow and how has it been so far you've, you've been back for almost a year yes a little over okay. a year how, how is Ghana treating you right now? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, uh, Ghana is treating me, I would say, like home. Okay. Home has its... I came to Ghana with my eyes wide open, so I knew what I can expect from Ghana, the differences, the frustrations, and I embrace all of it. Okay. So I, my, my mantra is I'd rather deal with the, the problems or the frustrations of my people than the frustrations I was having over in America, and that's mm. not home. So. What was some of the frustrations you were having in America? <laughs> Well, in America, you have to deal with, um, there's the aspect of the racism, which also came, was a huge topic during the pandemic area, um, pandemic years. Um, we had a lot of protests, the presidential drama going on, election drama going on. And it was just like, I don't really have to deal with this. I know where I come from. I have a home. I have a purpose. I've always wanted to come back to Ghana and help in the healthcare space. Okay. So um, I was like, no, I just want to, instead of just working to pay bills, that's what America is, working to pay bills. Mm. It's hard to achieve like your passions and goals if when you're just like on the grind and on the like every go month, it, go, go get, get it. it, yeah. So it's hard to really think about yourself and your life and your purpose. I don't think God really put us on this earth just to like pay bills and die. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. that's strong. Yeah. Wow, so that made you listen, move back to the continent to contribute. Yes. yes. And you were telling me about what you, you, you've established here, yeah. trying to take care of the, um, the, um, elderly and then providing services, home services for people as well. Let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about, about, about that, if you don't. Okay. So yeah, my background is in um, healthcare consulting entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I worked in a clinical space back home, but my family, we have a lot of healthcare businesses and um, one of them is home health agency. So I decided that was one of the most easiest thing to kickstart over here. So we can provide nursing services, caregiving services, a lot of mobile testing services to um, into your home, also take you to appointment. So if you have elderly, disabled, injuries, okay. um, you can have someone come to your home and provide wow. you care. That's very smart. Yeah. Wow. And, and <laughs> you wanted to do this home. Why? Someone would say, you could have done the same in the USA. But we were. You were? I am. Okay. Yeah. That's my family business. So, okay. um, but we needed here too, healthcare. Okay. I think that was one of my core memories coming to Ghana. Interesting enough was my older cousin was pregnant mm -hmm. and um, I have a nine year difference between my sister and I. So I had just watched my mom give birth to my sister her whole pregnancy and then I was watching my older cousin and it was just something as simple as how she had to like bring her own supplies mm -hmm. to the hospital and like I was seeing how the healthcare transaction was working okay. and so it was one of my driving forces to be in the medical field besides just growing up in it and wanting to be a part of just establishing a better system. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. But let me ask you this. Sure. When you decided, listen, I came for holidays in Ghana, yeah. but it has dawned on me I want to stay here. Mm -hmm. When you told your mom, your dad, listen, I want to stay on the continent. Mm -hmm. I want to establish this here. But bear in mind, they traveled to the dreamland to give you this, you know, opportunity, and you say, no, I don't want to do that. I want to move back to the continent. How did they receive it the first time you told them? My mom was the one that pushed me. She put the idea in my head wow. to actually stay because she knows how much I love Ghana. No one in my family was super surprised, even extended. Mm -hmm. My grandpa was like, oh, yeah, Selim well, loves Ghana. Everyone was just like, Ghana is hard. It's hard. All this stuff. That, that's all you hear. It's hard. And I'm no, just like, hard. okay, but like, <laughs> what are we really talking about? Life is hard. But no, um, the system is hard, but you just have to know what you're getting yourself into and um, just be ready for that. My dad, he came back actually he had to come back okay. for a certain reason. What is the reason? <laughs> um, actually this is a, not a topic we talk about a lot because we talk about immigration in America a lot mm -hmm. and it's usually like the Mexican-American border yeah. but also um, my dad was also deported um, wow. back in the early 2000s so I actually hadn't seen my dad for like over 20 years and I wow. saw him in Ghana last year for the wow. first time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Let's stop there. <laughs> Cut this record. Yeah, yeah. 
For real? Yeah, so, um, yeah, a lot of things happen. So the immigration policy does affect Africans and other countries as well. Wow. Yeah. So you, wow. Yeah, so he, because he was kind of forced here, he had a really negative experience and was just like really urging me to think about it a lot. He now lives in Belgium, okay. so but he does come back and mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so opposite reactions. My mom was very supportive. My mom helped me. She like helped me get my game plans together. Mm -hmm. She started watching videos of Dash would send me YouTube videos of people mm -hmm. who moved back. That's like she's my best friend. So, so she was that very supportive. Me to move back. She is probably I couldn't have done it without her. Wow. Yeah. Let me let me go back a little bit. <laughs> okay. When your dad had to leave the U.S. and then that, that is you and your mom all of a sudden, how was the upbringing without your dad? And would it have been a little different if your dad was there? Mm -hmm. And what would that have been? If you what would that have been that? like? Well, first off, they were divorced two years before he was deported. So I hadn't, I kind of already, mm -hmm. I guess it was shared custody things. I saw him mm -hmm. um, for a certain amount of time. So I, I guess, my mom was very solid, so I, I think when I was younger, I just had like a yearning, like I was like, oh, my dad's not here, I would always like call, at that time it was like email mm -hmm. a lot, so I can't say what I would miss because my mom was so solid, but right. I know not, um, and then she was remarried, so I did have a father okay. growing up. Okay. But not having my dad, seeing my dad now, you kind of get to know like another aspect okay. of yourself. I, there's a whole other that family that I don't know. That leads to my next question. Okay. <laughs> you, you saw him after 20 years. Yeah. You landed in Ghana and he, he met you? Yeah, he how had come was, to Ghana from Belgium. How was the feeling when you saw him again? It was sad because, um, you know, he aged. Like oh. I pictured, oh, why am I, I feel like I'm gonna do it. Like I pictured, I always had a picture of my young dad okay. in my mind. Okay. And like, yeah, we did a bit of video calls from time to time, but to see him, I'm like, it, seeing him oh. really showed, and he was also so shy, like I'm a grown woman, like he missed everything. Oh, wow. So, um, oh, thank yeah. you for sharing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But yeah. I mean, you, I see you everywhere. I see you doing your thing, yeah. you know, and you know, I don't think it's all sunshine and rainbows, you'd say, right? What have been something you faced that you're like, listen, Ghana is really hard. What has been some yeah. challenges you faced right from the airport since you moved back? Right from the airport, um, I think, what do you have to be careful of, especially when you share a dream, is people putting fear into your dreams. And so the biggest thing that you hear is like, you just can't trust everyone. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I've been blessed, like God really made me meet the right people. Even when it came to finding a place, you hear a lot of horror stories about mm -hmm. people finding a place, realtors taking your money, different things like that. I found a great property management company, different things. But I would say my biggest thing, because I didn't bring a car, uh -huh. weird enough, mm -hmm. transportation, just interacting with the different Uber situations. Uh -huh. Uber is a nightmare and I take Uber everywhere. <laughs> And it is a headache. It can be a headache. Well, what, what what creates that headache? Okay. The calling of asking where are you going or watch what? <laughs> I mean, that was a shock in of itself. Yeah. But that's where I mean, there's well, one you realize they don't want cars. So you first you start trying to do car trips, and then like they'll literally be like, no, I'm not taking it. They want cash. Instead, they want cash, and then like cash, you can take all the cash that you want, and eventually finish. Then some people want Momo, some people don't. Some mm -hmm. people call you, they say where you're going, tell where you're going. Sometimes they'll tell you they don't, they won't go. Sometimes they'll tell you, okay, hang up, then cancel. Mm -hmm. Then some people want to go offline. It's just some people have a bad attitude, just had a bad day. Wow. So it's like you're going about your day, and then mm -hmm. oh. Uh, Uber drivers, they try. God uh, bless them, but they're, it's a lot. The, system, the Uber system is I've heard this crazy. a lot, right? What makes you think we have that quality service in the West, in the US, in other European countries, mm -hmm. where they literally know how to do their job, job. right? But here, for some reason, everything it's, doesn't go according to plan. I don't, first of all, I don't know who created the Ghana Uber app, because you use the same app, but I guess they don't tell you where you're going. In, in America, 
the drivers can see, see where, going. where they're going. That's why they're not calling to ask. It's direct deposit. You can do direct deposit instantly. I think maybe a lot of people don't have like a banking system, okay. their credit card, mm -hmm. so they don't. That's why that cashing is that's really important to them. Yeah, so it's literally just the app works differently. And then I think some people get cars, and maybe it's not their car, so they're boss, so they're trying to do shady things. I see. I see. So it's just the app works differently. Wow. I don't think it's the drivers, and because of that, that's. Wow. That is a challenge. Yeah. I would want, I faced that <laughs> when I was using Uber before I started driving, but it was it was hard. That's frustration. That's probably my. It's weird. I'm like my biggest frustration is Uber. I need a car. <laughs> really? That's the biggest. It's my biggest frustration. Okay. So what would you say yeah. was your second? Um, my second, other than that, <laughs> um, I would say, interesting enough, being Ghanaian, mm -hmm. growing up in a Ghanaian community, very right. tapped in. My mom is very traditional realizing there's still a culture difference. So okay. I would say people, you want to, you're new here personally, I'm not here with family, so you want to connect with people. Okay. And I'm like a very open, mm -hmm. friendly person, but people are like, Ghanaians are friendly, we're not known to be rude, but mm -hmm. you don't really know what's going on inside. People are cool, yeah. but- For what reason? Yeah, so it's hard being vulnerable. I've definitely had different friendship heartbreaks some people chop your money <laughs> no one has chopped my money oh, really yeah oh, i'm proud okay. of that what are you doing <laughs> i don't know god god no one has taken my money i've never been robbed mm -hmm. blind no okay. yeah wow. like those things that you hear like rent my living situation is great i don't have any horror stories like that i don't have any robbing mm -hmm. situations um I do have people around me. I don't, don't ever feel like I'm being overcharged or something. Okay. I kind of know what the prices are. Okay. I don't like, mm -hmm. I don't go to places where the prices aren't marked. Okay. And okay. I have someone, if it's like a market situation, services, I never feel like I'm being. Okay, I see. Yeah. Because your accent is. It's you know, telling. Yeah. It's telling. I want to ask you do you feel like you're welcomed as Ghanaian? Because when you tell someone I'm Ghanaian, like, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. you, see, you don't sound like I mean how do you face that and how do you react react to how it? do I react to it oh, well I think people ask like are you Ghanaian and I'll say yes and they're like oh but you're not from here and I'm like yeah I grew up in the states okay. and that's pretty much that question and then it's like why are you here and then I tell them oh I've moved there and it's like did you do you live here my, I think my only question is the why okay because I'm like what do you mean why like I just yeah. want to be here yeah. like we can have there's so many reasons why right. so like I understand mm -hmm. and then and then right after why it's like we want to go there and you want to come yeah. here. <laughs> That's let's, let's connect. Let's talk about that. Okay. Why do you think your eyes, we were speaking behind cameras and you were sharing so much ideas yeah. on things and opportunities you see here, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's not every Ghanaian who thinks like this, by the way. But mm -hmm. there are some people who don't see all this opportunities Potential. flying everywhere. And you, people like yourself come and they're like, whoa, I can do this. I can make money from here. Why do you think your eyes are open to all these things and most or some Ghanaians doesn't see all these things? Um, well, a lot of the things that I see potential in Accra, the economy and everything is like a very fertile ground. There's mm -hmm. so much that, you know, we do overseas that hasn't been established here is just not being established. So we're like, oh yeah, we can do that. We can bring that here, exactly. basically. So it's just kind of that, oh, we can bring that here. Okay. So it's that perspective. And then um, I think Ghanaians have ideas. Some mm. have ideas, but then it's also investments, okay. capital, Finance. finances are okay. a thing. So and sometimes you're just trying to think about surviving, <laughs> yeah. paying, you know, making your way, just, you know. Okay, interesting. Living. Let, let's, try, let's go back a little bit. Okay. Growing up in the U.S. as... Um, is it second generation Ghanaian? I think a first generation. First generation, right? American. Amer sorry, yes, American. First generation How American. was it like growing up there, you know, mm. among uh, black Americans and, and everything? How was it like for you? Um, I, it was, I, I think the thing I can remember the most was feeling like I didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. Even though I, like, I had a lot of friends, I'm like the same how I am now. 
but we have different values as Africans. Wow. So even something as simple as like, I don't know, like clothes, dressing, hair, mm -hmm. um, it had more of a sweet, I grew up more strict. Okay. So maybe um, kids could wear like certain things or and do different things. So maybe I wasn't like as cool. Okay. And then people knowing you're African, people just think it's funny to make mm -hmm. fun of you because wow. you're African. Wow. Just like the food I eat, just saying weird things like, oh, you eat zebra and lion. Really? And yeah, just wow. weird things like that. And was this coming from like um, the normal Americans, Caucasians, or mm -hmm. this was coming from the black community? Yeah, both. I, I grew up in a pretty white neighborhood from like middle school, which is like sixth grade. So it was like, it would be on the bus like all the time. Like, so we would have like parties, like wow. maybe a funeral. And then they would see all the cars parked. You know how we do our one week. Yeah. And so then they would like, they would hear our music and different things like that. And, and just like ask me weird, ignorant yeah. questions or like, I'll go to Ghana and come wow. back. And I'll have like my braids. I, I was someone who always wore braids. So even back then, it just wasn't as cool. cool. <laughs> now look at it now. Yeah, towards like high school and then college. Now I'm like the coolest person wow. ever. But you know, what, what, yeah. what I think that was the, the disconnect there. Then it was not cool. Now, now it's, it's cool. cool. But it's the same thing. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think we had some, I don't know what triggered it, but there was a renaissance of just getting back to blackness. Mm -hmm. I remember it wasn't cool to be dark skinned. Like I got, I kind of felt cast out because I was on the darkest spectrum. People preferred light was right. That's what mm -hmm. we say in America, like being lighter skinned or mixed was cool, people wanted to like, even black Americans would prefer to say like, oh, I'm mixed with Indian okay. or something, like I have wow. good hair versus not having good hair, which is nappier hair. Mm -hmm. So anything closer to blackness, which uh, being black, being closer to black is being close to African. Wow. So people just rejected that. And then I remember a social media, Instagram got popular, then there was more dark skin girl appreciation mm -hmm. and then rappers want to start using dark skin girls in music videos. Exactly. At first they didn't use dark skin mm -hmm. girls and then they it's more of the African, the Afro. I don't know, it's just, yeah. I think things then, get oh, cool, so became, became cool. cool. And then I think as people felt, social media, we talked about racism more. Mm -hmm. That's like after um, Trayvon Martin was shot as people start to talk about racism more, then they wanted to know where they come from more, especially African-Americans. So as mm -hmm. those conversations then, then Kente became cool, but they called it African print or, oh, everyone started wearing the dashiki. They call it yeah, dashikis, dashiki. but that's not, yeah. So everyone started wearing that. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, and yeah, then we just had more Afro fest mm -hmm. in um, New York and all of this stuff. So mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. it just became wow. black but, I power. Mean, hmm. Somehow, I don't know how people control these thinking anyways, but it's very yeah. interesting. So interesting. Did you associate yourself when they ask, where are you from? Like, where are you from? Do you associate with Ghana? Because I, I know most people who uh, maybe um, they have their forefathers coming from Ghana, but would never associate themselves. Same. They're like, I'm American. I grew up from America. My forefathers are Americans. I'm not African. Stop calling me African. Did you associate mm -hmm. yourself? No, I was very prideful of being Ghanaian. Okay. There were some people actually tried to tell me, well, no, you're first generation American or you're Ghanaian American. I always loved saying, oh, I'm Ghanaian, mm -hmm. but I was born here. Some people like to say, oh, I'm American, mm -hmm. but my parents are from Africa. Yeah. And I was always like, oh, I'm yeah. Ghanaian, but I was born in America. That's nice. I was always like I that. see how you're embracing uh, Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's from a little kid, so it's not surprising okay, that yeah. I, I always yeah. knew I would move to Ghana before moving back okay. was a thing. Was it because of your upbringing? Yeah, I thinking about it now is definitely like my mom okay. was very traditional, very prideful. But ironically enough, she hates Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't mean to say yes, but she it's something about she can't take the dust. She can't. Oh. She gets frustrated. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just doesn't like nonsense. Oh, no. And Ghana, we love nonsense. <laughs> she doesn't like. 
people who take their time to do things. Yeah. She can like she when she came, she came helped and helped me move. Mm -hmm. And like the restaurant service, she was just questioning everything. Wow. But um, <laughs> <laughs> she actually wants to move now. Now that I'm here, she wants to you move half time. Did you want to move? Sure did. <laughs> she's watching right now. What, what do you have to say to her? Oh, she's gonna laugh. But I told you, I think it's me. She misses me. Wow. That's my best friend. Wow. So yeah, I wanted to ask you. I mean, because you had that upbringing from yeah. a Ghanaian mom, I think um, you didn't have any um, misconception or stereotype no. about Ghana or Africa before you moved. No, back and like I said, we spent a lot of summers here. I came back to Ghana, and, and that's like three months okay. out of the year. Came back and forth. Um, and then like even food, I never ate a lot of American food. My mom's mm -hmm. a great cook, so I only wow. ate Ghanaian food at food. home. Like I'm big on fufu, mm -hmm. I mean everything. What's your favorite? <laughs> My favorite, I think when I was younger, I would have said omutu, omutu. and then and, and then it's omutu and peanut butter soup, okay. and then um, then I moved to fufu. Now I'm like a benkun fufu. I'm really big on benkun tilapia now. Tilapia. I love it. Pe pe perfect. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, my favorite food is okra. Okra. Okra is really good too. Meat, the tender the tender. So what is it about in Ghana? The meat is so hard sometimes. You, no can, you can bite it. Leave it alone. <laughs> Be careful, man. What happened they, they, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Please now that we need goat's to meat is hard touch. now. Please. We don't have the teeth to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah. You, you, I'm officially welcoming you to the continent. Thank right? you. Now, people are watching you from the diaspora right okay. now. Okay. People like yourself, okay. diasporans, mm -hmm. they, they are encouraged or inspired by your story. Sure. They want to move back. Okay. I know definitely you have, you know, some like, I wish I knew this before coming to Ghana. If they are mm. watching, what do you think would be the best of things they should watch out or know before they step foot on the continent if they want to come? Number one is patience. Patience. Yeah, you okay. have to cultivate patience and humility. Just be willing to learn. I truly like dedicated six months to a year to just not try to make any major moves, especially if you have like some business idea. Don't mm -hmm. be like so quick, try to get it. I mean, you can plant seeds, meet the right people, but I would say be a student, learn, everything that you can mm -hmm. history and then come and just like learn just be easy going i think when you try to like force things or fight things yeah we want to see a change in different things but i would say just embrace the process okay. embrace the process some things will happen i know that, like some people just get so um not even impatient, but they get so aggravated mm -hmm. by how long, whether it's the Uber or someone coming to do something, they say tomorrow, 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 mm -hmm. and how long it gets so fast. And I think it ruins your own experience. Mm -hmm. Like, just be like, okay, okay, like that's what it is. And just, mm -hmm. you know, I go see. with it. And I then see. you do have to be persistent though, but do it from a pay place of like, you just understand the process. That's one. I would say, mm -hmm. If you're gonna come, I don't know what your money looks like, <laughs> <laughs> but I always urge people to d don't come and d like, even if you're coming with a lump sum or you're able to work remotely, I would say choose your your bills wisely, whether like the place you're gonna live mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, the dollar goes a long way, but also I would say start humbly and then work your way up and I think you'll be more comfortable that way if you come and want to do the same lifestyle you had in America then there's really no point or from abroad wherever you're coming from I feel like there's there's mm -hmm. no point then right. um so that would be another thing mm -hmm. and then um yeah just yeah, for me, I think my biggest thing was like, I'm a very patient, easygoing person, but you need like another level <laughs> <laughs> of like, patient. like I just get like, mm -hmm. first like things aren't happening mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Wow. Yeah. Well, with all this um, mm -hmm. up and downs you've been through, right? Would you say you ever got to a point where you, you wish you never made the move back or you feel like, let me just go back to the US, go do my work or whatever that I was doing, 95 mm -hmm. and just 
say bye to Ghana? Have you ever felt or been at that point where you were like, maybe I shouldn't have come here? No. I've had times, especially if people were call, like, I wake up and like, hey, so I really moved. Like, I really, like, I'm really here. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that type of feeling, but never regret. I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm a little hard headed, though. Like, mm -hmm. even if I feel frustrated, I feel like, defeated I'll just like take some time but like I'm I'm if it's not plan a then it's plan B then plan C then plan D like I'm not going back on it I made my decision mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing I felt and still do feel is like I don't have like my loved ones like oh. I have people okay. that I think I've connected to but it made me actually appreciate okay. my my tribe. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's different not having that. Wow. Not I'm being thinking about a very, very funny question. Sure. People you love, right? Yeah. Are you single? <laughs> <laughs> I am single. Wow, okay. I am okay. single. Because I was looking out for my guys. Okay? Oh, oh <laughs> you are God. Watching. <laughs> you are watching, okay? They are like, look at this young, amazing woman. Who is the lucky man? You're single. Um, yeah. Wow. Are you mm -hmm. searching? I'm open to receiving. Receiving what? <laughs> oh, like I'm open to to go offers, dates. go on dates. Okay. Yeah. I don't like. I feel like searching means I'm okay. going to look. Okay. She's open. Guys. Yeah. If I'm definitely are, ready. A gentleman <laughs> watching, and you're like, this is my type of woman. Hey, <laughs> this is a dating show now. <laughs> Surprisingly, I had someone who came on the show mm -hmm. like the guys are sending me emails and then Instagram DM as well. I'm like, really? okay. Oh wow. You can be crazy, but not that crazy. Don't send email you never and know. go to the DM at the same time. Mm -hmm. Just DM is fine. Okay. Slide in a DM. The name is on the screen. Mm -hmm. Shoot your shot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I mean you've tried dating since you moved back to Ghana. Um so I make friends. Mm -hmm. I have actually haven't gone on a date, and no one believes me when I say this. I've no way. yeah, I've made. I feel like I cry small. Okay. So like I would, like we'll be friends. Like I can go out mm -hmm. to hang out. Like you know hang out, and then like I get to know people. But I haven't. You feel really gone. dated. I know I have not dated. So Wait one thing minute. I'm missing out on. You're missing out. Yeah, I'm missing so you out. have no dating experience. You've not dated a Ghanaian, real Ghanaian. Because I really wanted to ask you. You know what yeah. they say out there when you're in the US that yeah. most uh, American, Black Americans in the US, especially really, the Ghanaian. Yeah, they love Ghanaian men and they say so many beautiful things about Ghanaian men. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said the best. You said. Yeah, exactly. you said the best. You know, yeah, I've never even in America. I've never officially dated a Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've talks to, especially closer to coming in Ghana, which was mm -hmm. weird. Mm -hmm. That's when I started, and Ghanaian men are different, like dating African men is different than dating outside. That's a whole really? game. Tell me the difference. Now you are <laughs> not going to get into that. <laughs> dating African men, I feel like you have to, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's like they'll show interest, mm -hmm. they're very persistent by the way, yeah. but, <laughs> but then there's some, uh, part where I feel like women take the lead more. Mm. And I, women, I feel like women take the lead more as far as like, where is this going? What are we doing? I was more just taught like, oh, you don't ask those type of questions okay. and stuff like that. But I feel like with Ghanaian men, if you're not. So ask, do you like it or hate it? Oh, it's different. I don't okay. like it. I love Ghanaian men. Okay. Um, I can't pin a reason why I haven't. Okay. okay, so that's what I wanted to say. One mm -hmm. thing I resented was when I was coming, everyone was like, oh, you're coming to get married. Because of that thing, I think a lot of oh. Americans come, but it was like, if that was a reason why I could have stayed back, like I had offers. Okay, okay, it's okay. Like, it's not because of <laughs> finding a man okay. that I'm coming back Did home. your friend think you were coming to Ghana to find a Ghanaian man? Not my friend, but some, outside from like the core people that knew me but the core people that knew me were like oh you're going to you think you're not okay. but because of how Ghanaian men are that's where you're going they, yeah they're they're like oh you're gonna find someone like i'm not worried i'm not wow. doing it but they're like oh within six months you're gonna be married and now we're like oh, 14 months <laughs> it's one year. Yeah. when is the ring coming when is it coming you know so what they say is true that Ghanaian men are the best men in the whole of west africa absolutely okay absolutely okay. I, yeah Ghanians are winning. Okay, mm -hmm. we are almost at the end of our conversation, <laughs> okay. right? You've moved back, you're doing great on the continent. Yeah. Do you have any regrets? 
No, I don't have any. I think um, I'm, I'm a bit of like, I think, so a lot of people want to move. I get that, like, everyone's like, oh yeah, I want to move, or I want to live in Ghana, or do part-time, but I'm waiting for this, that, and the third. I'm, I've made a plan, and I had a vision, and I think I'm on track, but I'm, I, maybe I didn't, like, wait for all those things someone wishes they would have. Otherwise, you mm -hmm. won't do it. You always never, will never fully be ready. Mm -hmm. So I, I built my parachute on the way down. <laughs> so with that comes bumps. Okay. Yeah, so I've had bumps, but I don't have regrets. Okay. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So it's been worth it for you? It's been worth it for me, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. wow. So if you should get the chance to go back in time, this is months before you made a decision to come mm -hmm. to Ghana. And you just woke up one morning, and everything that you've done so far is a dream. Okay? Oh, oh. Okay. Are you going to live your dream or be like, nah? Oh, oh, what I go? Hmm, that's a good, quiet way to put it. <laughs> I think, okay, here's mm. the thing. Okay. Everyone should know if you're going on a dream, you want to move somewhere, a lot of people are discontent with their lives, mm -hmm. you take yourself wherever you go. Okay. So what, I, whatever heartaches or frustration I have in Ghana, I don't blame on Ghana. Okay. I think Ghana has afforded me the time, mm -hmm. this, like leaving the hustle and bustle to really work on myself. Okay and like introspect so um i think it like that that amount of growth that ghana has given me i would never like i, I would do it all over again but okay. because of that i think yeah i think some of my experiences is everything's like a reflection i believe everything's like a mirror in life mm -hmm. so i take more personal responsibility for like decisions or different things that have happened more so to be like, okay, this was part of my learning experience and I would never, I couldn't have mm -hmm. gotten that back home. I would have just been in the rat race. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What would you say has been one most important lesson Ghana has taught you since you moved back? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, the most important lesson I've learned um, you have to live consciously. Okay. Yeah, I think for me, it's like very personal, but to just live more consciously, relating to people, understand people. I personally have understand per, like personal relationships a lot better okay. and how important it is to understand like this psychology that goes behind relating to people, um, making connections, mm -hmm. yeah, and like just how to be as a person. Okay. I think I've just realized what, like, I who I am. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that one, yeah. Like, it's made me a better people. I think Ghanaians are very good-hearted, a very, like, pragmatic people. Mm -hmm. Like, That's what a big English. I'll pretend I understand. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, I don't know, as Americans, or just, I keep saying America because it's me, but we question a lot, and whereas like in Ghana, maybe because things are hard, even like little kids like are just very like, this is what it is, and this is what it is, and like they move on, like, oh, okay. Ghanaians like, like let things roll off their back so fast because you have to keep they going. Keep they, they don't keep, yes, that's the word they use. They don't keep things inside. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that. And okay. it's telling me, I'm someone who like wow. just holds on to things. Wow. So that's beautiful. yeah, I love that. Just life is, it just life wow. is, life goes on. Wow. Yeah. Would you advise your friends to move back if they're watching? Depends on the friend. It's not okay. for everyone. Okay. It's not for everyone. <laughs> not for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. We have a wonderful conversation. It's yeah. been amazing. Yeah. Now, if you have a last message for the people, mm -hmm. you know, you, what would that message be? My last message mm -hmm. would be to. Um, I don't know, now I'm like, is it life or is it for Ghana? It's for in general. Um, I would say come back home. As much as I say it's not for everyone, 
I believe that when it comes to like the liberation and advancement of black people everywhere, we have to look out for ourselves and help each other and just focus on like, I don't know, there's a lot that goes on abroad and within here. And I think like we really need to just be our brother's keeper, do what we can, like do what you can to make your corner of the world a better place, even mm -hmm. if it's within your family, for your family and stuff. And I think a big part of that is doing that on the continent. I don't believe in um, building another man's country, but that's my personal um, mission. And if you do choose to stay abroad, because not for everyone, when if you are trying to you know as a black person we all we, that that's the goal for me i think as if you're if you wake up black there's a job to do mm -hmm. and whether that's just to live your best life for your ancestors because they went through so much mm -hmm. and all of that i think we all need to take up our cross mm -hmm. as black people and i don't know invest in your community, if that's abroad or if that's in Ghana. If you're coming to Ghana, invest in Ghana, even if you don't want to live here or whatever African country you're from. And then invest in your local community. And let's just, I don't know, it's a lot of negativity, a lot of violence against each other, a lot of um, separation that it's not all, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it goes deeper. Okay. By the end of the day, we need to be conscious. So we need to be conscious towards each other. Yeah. A lot of people are moving back, by the way. Yes. African Americans. Yes. And they are like they are saying, listen, America is doomed. Oh yeah. I've been hearing this. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> is it everyone or everybody have a different story? What do you have to what, is, what is happening in America? What's happening in America? People are dying. <laughs> really? For no reason. Because like we have the gun control issues. Mm -hmm. Um, everything is going backwards. Laws that have been established for a long time are going backwards. The I don't even know. It just gets crazy and crazier. The the racism is less. It used to be a very understated, and now it's just out in the open. Excuse me. And it's just it's just negative. Okay. And it's as much as we have opportunities and all these things, everything's how you want to look at it. But I do especially empathize with um, African Americans because they don't know, they don't necessarily know their, like where specifically where they, they come from. Okay. So they uh, have to even, they're, they're doing what our parents did by mm -hmm. going abroad. They're mm -hmm. now coming to like this mm -hmm. no man's land. This yeah, land. this is their abroad, <laughs> yeah. And it's hard and they're gonna have to figure it out and stuff, but imagine the sense of freedom you have mm -hmm. uh, for me it's like my frustration being in america is like i was going through experiencing mm -hmm. things that weren't my burden i know where my home is so mm -hmm. why am i having this th oppressed experience mm -hmm. and i don't have to be oppressed yeah yeah wow wow that's very yeah. interesting mm -hmm. very interesting you spoke a little mm -hmm. about your business but i want people watching to really understand the impact you're making here and the services okay. you are offering. Okay. So they can even, you know, reach out. Yes. Um, healthcare is a human right, um, accessibility and having proper healthcare. So overall, that's my mission. Um, with the business I have going on out with the Home Healthcare Agency, if you just want um, care, um, services and healthcare that you can trust and, um, it's just yeah. it's just top notch reliable <laughs> yeah we really care i obviously i operate my business how from where i came from mm -hmm. um that's the goal okay. and then also it it will become a non-profit i want to get into mobile clinics okay. and go into the more rural areas because i just find at least one thing about america and it comes to healthcare it doesn't if whether you go it doesn't really matter the money you have mm -hmm. With that, that's the thing that's kind of frustrating here. It's like, it doesn't matter the money you have, there's a basic sense of healthcare you're gonna get no matter what neighborhood you're in. Okay. Obviously, some hospitals are gonna look better than some, but you're gonna be afforded, healthcare isn't perfect, because I know some people are also <laughs> gonna say, oh, there's medical racism, there's medical, there is those things. But the, compared to here, there's a basic um, services that you're gonna get that you don't get here. And 
it's it's hard mm -hmm. to grasp a concept of like having to pay before you get yeah, care yeah. it breaks my heart <laughs> but um yeah so i when it comes to my personal business, if especially if you are in the diaspora, you can at least reach out to us and get that care that you are used to. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, um, or especially if you're diaspora and maybe have family members here and you're not able to um, find anyone to take care of them. But the bigger mission is to really reform the healthcare system because mm -hmm. uh, we can't talk about anything. Anyone can fall ill or yes. succumb to mm -hmm. injuries at any moment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. So we, I think that that's my personal mission when it comes to Ghana. Wow, that is a great mission. Yeah. People are moving back yeah. to the you know continent and contributing you know mm -hmm. to make Africa great again. Yes, so if you're watching this and you're inspired. You. Do the needful, okay? Ghana yeah. needs you. Africa needs you. It might not be Ghana. It might be South Africa. It might be Kenya. It might be Zambia. Do the needful. Move to the continent. Contribute to the um, the continent. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you this last question before we leave. Sure. <clears throat> A lot of people want to leave the country. Ghanaians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What message do you have for the African youth who sometimes goes through the Mediterranean and they lose mm -hmm. their lives just because they want to get to Europe to work in McDonald's? You know, mm. I know like sometimes I'm trying to make it, you send a message to them because it's tough thinking about why do people have to go through this to get somewhere that has been preached that is the dreamland, but that's yeah. not entirely true. Yeah, uh, it's two parts to it. There, you know, some people need to be more transparent about how it is exactly. back there. It's it's not all um, roses. roses. Yeah. It's not, and um, but you know, some people know that and they still feel because you know the wages that we get compared to the it's the wages. Yes. When I found out the salaries yes. here, it is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. But um, at the end of the day, there's so much that Africa does right, even with cash and carry. Like I was saying, um, if someone has a car and you see them, they have a car, they yeah, have that car mm -hmm. versus like with us, we have a car, you fall sick and you can't work, you're getting cut, they're taking your car, they're taking your house. Yeah, we have some government assistance things, these things, we can't get into all of it now, but mm -hmm. it's not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. But if it's opportunity to you looking for, maybe you don't mind working three jobs to pay your bills and you can help out your family here and it feels like that's what you have to do. I'm not against it because there isn't a lot of help, but we were talking about the brain drain. Mm -hmm. The biggest, we Africa is losing a lot of natural resources to abroad, but the biggest one is humans. Yes. We are also a natural resource that mm -hmm. the best and the brightest are going and becoming world leaders, doctors. I think the chancellor in um, UK is mm -hmm. Ghanaian. Ghanaian. Yeah, so there's just, we're, we're doing so much to build someone else's country and then we're all saying leaving Africa for dead. And it's like, okay, but who's going to, mm -hmm. and I get it because it's like, you're just trying to serve, you know, mm -hmm. eat. <laughs> but at the same time, don't say you're going to just leave and never come back. That's my thing. And that's why I say about investing, like, you know, what it, if you can go and you feel like you want to make something of yourself and then come back and help your country or you go to for school and you acquire knowledge come back and apply that knowledge and it's not easy but again i would rather deal with the frustrations and struggle here because it's a struggle there it's just a different struggle it's, it's pick your struggle yeah, choose, one. choose your fighter <laughs> <laughs> so and everyone's we all have a different journey like i said when it comes to liberation of black people we all have a different mission so if yours is to go and make a better life for your family mm -hmm just you know find a way to come back wow. okay. and but also if you can't because visas are very hard to get yeah. don't be so discontent with your life there's so mm -hmm. much that goes right and sometimes peace of mind for me the peace of mind that i get here it's not easy 
um, but the, my peace of mind is a premium. Wow. And there's a certain peace of mind that you get from not having the anxiety. Being abroad is anxiety exactly. inducing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just grind. If you have to get to work at nine, nine. you miss it, you probably done. <laughs> this, this gotta, people come at 10 and 11, don't come, just none of that. So, um, I mean, you become, it, some of those things are good because it's discipline, yeah. but it's not mm -hmm. easy. Wow. Do you think it's possible to make it here in Ghana? It's definitely possible. Really? It's definitely possible because God did. <laughs> God did. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I love this conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to me. Yes. It's Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yes. So guys, please, I'll leave her um, information in the description please. and also in the, on the screen. Yeah. Go check her out and see what she's doing on the continent. Also, where we are filming right now is Bureau. It's a co-working space located in the middle of Accra, you know, so you move back from the diaspora, you went somewhere to work with high speed Wi Fi, no um, doom so many the electric mm -hmm. going off and on. Here is the best place for you to uh, I love be working. The link will be in the description. Click it, the GPS, you get here, book it up, work like you never left the US. And yes, thank you so much, it's been amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, peace out, ladies Hi. and gentlemen, and please subscribe. YouTube told yes. me 80% of you guys watching and like. They didn't subscribe. Can you believe it? They love it. YouTube is telling they love the show. You just have but to they click. are not subscribing. Just, just a press of a button. Please. Support, like, subscribe. We're doing something amazing. I actually love your series. If oh. you're moving back, when I moved back, mm -hmm. I watched a lot of these videos wow. and it's helpful to know what you're Did getting really into. Help, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I can name a few YouTubers. Mm -hmm. It's great. I haven't really wanted to get on screen and tell my story, so I appreciate this opportunity. Um, to use you your your yeah. platform, but it's great what you're doing. Wow. So Thank good you. luck. I don't know how to react to with with compliments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Also follow me on social media, Captain underscore yeah. Hayford. And yeah, this has been the end of the conversation. If you did enjoy, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Bye bye. bye, -bye.